Hello, hello, logging in. Come on in. Make sure I have my volume all the way up. Come on in. Hey, Alicia. How are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you, girl. I'm trying, honey. I ain't seen outside in two weeks. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Happy New Year. I'm still going to get you to make me a cake, honey. I ain't forgot. Oh. I was going stir crazy. I'm getting it back, getting my rhythm back. Thank you, Lord. So, amen. I don't want, I want to hold us uh, too long. I uh, was waiting for a few more people to come in. Please tag, share, invite someone to join us. Um. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And tell her I will be using that. Um. Hello, Doris. Hello, hello, hello for all of you who are logging in. Um, we're going to talk about vision tonight. Um, something God gave me in 2018. I keep saying last year, but it was actually 2018. Hey, Kathy. And I kept fighting. Oh, I don't want to go live. I don't really, I'm not up to it. I don't feel like it. But it kept coming back to me. You need to share this. You need to share this. So many of you uh, have come in, of course, to 2020 talking about vision and having vision uh, spoken over your life. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to be at the watch night service uh, at my church. And then um, I was asleep uh, as the new year came in. So I didn't watch anybody's watch night service. Gunshots woke me up. So I want to get right into this word because I want to honor your time and share with you what uh, I believe the Lord wants me to share. And as I said, he started unfolding this thing. Uh, hello, Chrissy and Kathy and Sister Davis. And oh, thank you so much. Thank you all for your prayers. Yolanda. Hey, Yolanda. Uh, Sister Horton, uh, thank you for your prayers and my recovery time. I'm, I'm almost back. I'm almost back. So I'm just taking it easy as my mother and the doctors have instructed. Um, as God gave this to me in 2018, I was in Dallas. And um, I heard someone say 2020 vision. And because my company is Vision Focus Group Worldwide, it just really made me start um doing more research on vision. And certainly as God gave me that name several years ago uh, for my training and coaching company, Vision Focus Group, I had done a lot of research. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Tabitha on vision. Tommy is coming out with a book, Tommy Gray, uh, t entitled Deep Waters, a 30-day devotional. You guys are going to want to get his book. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. So, um, and if he's a man writing a devotional, so, uh, we will be, uh, he will start promoting that he, here in the next couple of weeks. So pre-order yours. So as God started to deal with me, Hey, sister tricks, uh, on this concept, girl, shut up. Oh my God. Yolanda, we got to talk. Inbox me your phone number. We got to talk. So, um, Lord have mercy, Jesus. I love you so much. So nonetheless, uh, let's look at this. So it is time. Uh, uh, hey, Sister Up Church. Um, yes, God is good. The Lord is good. Uh, this thing about vision. So it's time to bring our vision in to focus. Hey, Sister Miles. So Nehemiah 2, this is what the word of the Lord says. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought to him, I took the wine. This is Nehemiah talking and I gave it to the king. And he said, I had not been sad in the presence 
of, the, of him before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? When you are not ill. This can be nothing but the sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors were buried lies in ruin and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Go on, uh, hey, Sister Teresa. Hello, Brother Enders. Um, and read all of chapter two. Certainly, Nehemiah is a great story about building. The reason God took me to this text, because there were other scriptures that I had studied about 20 and, and certainly looking at the children of Israel coming out of Jerusalem. And the Bible says that God told him that no one over the age of 20 would be allowed to enter. They couldn't even see the promised land. Not only could they not enter, they could not see because of their rebellion and their complaining and all of those things. He said, anybody over 20, you don't get to go in. So as I looked at that, I started saying, God, but what do you want the people, this was in 2018, to know about 20, this 2020, this new decade, the fact that you are alive to be living in a new decade, glory to God. And so what is it that you want them to know? When I looked at Nehemiah 2, there are some significant things about this passage. One, for you to understand, 20 represents a cycle. It represents a cycle. It, it, someone would almost say a cycle of life. It, it represents a perfecting period, a perfecting period of time. Often that perfecting period of time is waiting. Mm. So it's the harmony and balance of time that is coming together and it has been perfected and it, it's the, it's a, um, it's a time that has come that is being, that is finished and it is often associated with a trial. So you've gone through something and now you've come to the end of the matter and it's finished. But with that trial, there is a reward. It is, it is the 20 years that Jacob had to wait to receive his blessing and his release of his reward from his father-in-law, uh, Laban. So often that 20 is associated to a time that you have waited on something and the cycle, you've gone through the cycle. You've gone through the cycle of loss. You've gone through the cycle of hurt. You've gone through the cycle of starting and stopping and finishing and failing and picking it back up and all this cycle. But now at the end of the cycle, it has been completed. And because it has been completed, you now receive a reward. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not just not yet seen. It's, it's the thing that you've waited on and it shall come. And now it is here. So when we think of 20, when we think of 20, and I want you to get a notepad, write it down, study it for yourself. This is how the Lord gave it to me starting in 2018 to prepare for 2020. Here you are with um, uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah is sad. He's sad. It is the 20th year of the king and he comes to him and he's sad. God wants me to tell you, you ain't got to be sad no more. Good God Almighty. You do not have to be sad anymore. Trust God in this season. Listen, 21, you, you, there's a decade. There's a decade. Yes, we know 20 to 2010. But I'm telling you that I'm telling you, 2020 is going to be key. Lift up your gates. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up so that the King of glory can come into your life. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your head. You don't have to be lifted down. However, this is what you need to know. When somebody asks you, what do you need? What do you want? What's wrong with you? I just told a friend that today. You need to be able to give them an answer. I come against depression in the name of Jesus. I come against lack. I come against people with their head down. I come against people wearing masks. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Smiling when ain't nothing funny. Good God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, I speak God's truth over you. 
that you will be able to speak the truth, tag, share, invite somebody to be a part. Because y'all know somebody who's in the middle of this. They slap and ain't nothing funny. Ain't nobody tickled them. Ain't nobody cracked a joke. That fake smile. Stop it. Lift up your head. And when somebody asks you, what do you want? What do you need? How can I help you? Right now, I'm telling you, get a piece of paper. Be able to, to practice your elevator pitch and know what you're going to say. Because God is going to have, listen, we're not, this isn't about having your head bowed low because you want a pity party. Because you want somebody to come in on your pity train. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who are genuinely low in spirit because they've lost something, because they've lacked something, because they went through the cycle of 2000 to 2019 and you've lost and you gained and you lost again. You lost relationships. You lost businesses. You've lost homes. You've lost ministries. The issues in your church. The issues in your family. All of these things that have left you uh, unsteady. They, they, your, voc your focus has gotten off. You don't even know who you are anymore. I had a friend tell me Tuesday in, in the in, in the cares of life and, and being married and raising children, I don't even know what my favorite color is. Come on now. You got to get to know you. You got to get to know you. You got to find the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Greater is he that is within you than anything that is in this world. Lift up your head, Nehemiah. Hallelujah. You got to build something. It's time for you to build. You got to lift up your head. But, not I guess it's not a but. When that person comes and your help comes, know how to tell them what you need help with. I need help with this. I need help with that. Which one of these things can you help me with? Glory to God. 2020 is going to be key. Yes, I believe in short-term and long-term goals. But I'm telling you, this first year is going to be key. You must lift up your head. And see the glory of the Lord over your life. Shake it off. Shake it off. Go get a counselor. Go get therapy. Go get what you need because you've been in a cycle. 20 represents a cycle, beloved. Hey, Sans. My Sans Wanda. My Sans Carmen. Uh, 20 represents a cycle. What is that cycle you've been in? Is it lack? Is it failed relationships? You tried to lose weight, you gained it back, you lost it again. Is it losing investments? What is the cycle? Job to job, relationship to relationship. What is it? What is this cycle you've been in? But God wants you to know the end of your cycle, beloved, is coming. The end of your cycle is is coming. Glory to God. It's like all of us wonderful women who are of a certain age, our cycle has ended. Hallelujah. We are in a new phase of life. Glory to God. And so understanding that it's the end of the matter. And now the end of your cycle, the end of your cycle, the end of your cycle. And now the reward is coming. It is covenant. The covenant over your life is being answered. The end of a cycle, the start to the end point, the end of a cycle is coming to an end and you are going to get your reward. I ain't telling you what I'm making up. This is the scripture. This is the scripture because he knew what to tell the king he needed. He said, why should I be happy when, when the things around me are in ruins? Some of us, the things around us in ruins is us. Glory to God. You got a heart, a, a, a hurt of a heart and emotions that need to be healed. Our, our, our credit needs to be healed. Glory to God. We have all of these things that we've suffered in the last uh, 20 years, this cycle that God is telling you it's ending. So when we look at 2020, I, I'm, I got to walk us through this. Many of us have been petitioning and praying and, and processing and planning and preparing and asking God for this perfect vision. But what I want you to understand and the manifestation of that vision, we've been taught that 20 slash 20, when you go to the doctor, that that is synonymous with perfect vision. So you're asking God for Perfect vision. And that's great. I, I've heard it preached. I've seen hashtag perfect vision, 2020 perfect vision. All that's cool. But it's the we perish for lack of knowledge. I believe um, the Bible says um, the letter, the, the spirit brings life, the letter kills. When we don't understand the spirit behind something, we miss it. 
And it is my assignment to make sure that we understand the spirit behind the thing. I'm very clear of my calling in the earth, minister, elder, prophet, whatever you want to call me, Tuesday, Sister Tuesday, all that is fine. But this I understand. When we understand the intent of a thing, you didn't have to be here in 2020. Neither did I. But God's grace, God's, God's love saw fit for us to see this new decade. And he expects for you to do something with it. He expects for me to do something with it. We don't have to get in a hurry. We don't have to get in a rush. We don't have to feel like we've lost step or we've lost, lost time. God is going to give you the answer tonight, I do believe, with what it is you need to do to bring understanding to the next move of your life. So, understanding that 20 slash 20, when we go to the doctor, is not perfect vision. Oh, I have perfect vision. I have 20-20 vision. Actually, it's not. 2020 vision, when you go to the doctor, is simply a, a measure of your eyesight, your ability to see, okay? It's the ideal measurement that says how far off, how far away can you see? It's your ability to see how far off, 20 feet, okay? If someone has 2040 vision, that's better. Someone has 2020, 20, 100 vision. Don't know if that's possible, but that means that they can see from the place that they're standing 100 feet away. From the place you're standing, 2040 vision, 140 feet away. That's what 2020 means. It's not that you have perfect vision, it's about the measurement of sight. Okay, follow me on this. Follow me on this. So if 20 represents the cycle of a thing, this you, it, it, it's the, the end of a thing. Uh, you, you've completed the cycle. And now there's a reward at the end. 20 this year, 2020 is vision. 20 slash 20 is sight. I can see up there without these. But I can't see too close up without these. Glory to God. They're readers. Most of us, many of us, have challenges not only with sight, but also with vision. Amen. We have issues with seeing afar off, and we have sometimes challenges with seeing close up. You know that chocolate man is wrong for you. You know that woman is not right for you. You know you should not buy that house. It's too much house. You can't afford it. You know you should not get that car. It's too much maintenance. You know it. You see it close up. It's right there in front of you in black and white, but you do it anyway. Yeah, we do it anyway. But the blessings of the Lord are to make you rich and add no sorrow. It ain't to bring you worry and stress. That was free, okay? So we can we have a problem seeing a far seeing close up and seeing afar off. But today God wants to settle both matters in your life. 2020, this year, is about manifestation. It's about the cycle ending and you receiving the reward for the thing that you've been waiting on, beloved. Hear you me. It is about the cycle ending and you receiving the thing that you've been waiting on, which is often related to a trial that you have been under, a testing that you have been under. Again, the example I gave you earlier was like Jacob, who had waited for 20 years to receive his wife and his property and for Laban to release all of that to him for his reward of labor. It is the, the 20th year that the king was in and Nehemiah came to him and said, listen, I'm, I'm sad at heart. This is what's going on with me. And this is the help that I need. You must be willing to open your mouth in this season. You must be willing to open your mouth in this season. Even right now, all of you who are on and listening, tag somebody, share, invite somebody, listen to me. You need to Open your mouth and say, Lord, this is what I see for my life. This is what I desire for my life. Afar off. Afar off. This is what I see because within vision is sight. Within vision, the long-term thing, 
that you see afar off, there is sight. Your vision encompasses your dreams. Dreams become visions. Visions you see. You, we, we serve a God who calls things that are not in our dreams, in, 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 um, in our dreams, in our imaginations, the vision, who calls things that are not as though they already are. This is the year for stuff to manifest. How is it going to manifest? Because you are going to write your vision. If you don't already have it written, you are going to make it plain so that when others read it, they can run with it. Listen, let me help you with something. This is free to men who are on. When a woman, when a man has a vision, a woman will follow you. She will. You got a vision? She can speak into that. She can pray into that. She can help make that happen. She will follow you. Pastors, when you have a vision, your people will follow you. But you got to be walking out your vision. You got to be speaking your vision. You got to be declaring your vision. You got to take steps towards the end, the reward of your vision being manifested. People follow vision. They'll follow men, people, for a little bit. But they follow people who have a vision. Not just people who have a purpose. They follow people who are living out their purpose according to the vision. So, vision starts from within. Remember I said it's a dream. It's up here, right? So, it, it, it's a dream. It's, it's this desire that you have. And, and, and so, vision starts within, Sight manifests outward. Your, your vision has to, you, truthfully, anything that is manifested outwardly started with a vision and was first a dream. It's something you just, you know, I remember when I was a little girl, lived in Benton Harbor. I had this, raised at my mom's house, had this window in front of my bedroom and there was a table in front of it. And I would sit in front of that window and would sit on that table and see trucks pass and, and all these things. And there was a lady in Ben Harbor, Michigan. I don't know who what her name was. She had a pink Cadillac. I didn't know what pink Cadillacs represented. I said, oh, I want one of those. I'm going to drive one of those one day. Fast forward years later, I'm a Mary Kay director. I'm working towards earning my car. I earned my first car within the first five months of me uh, starting the business. When I was sitting in front of that window, you know, I'm little. It ain't like kids today who got the internet and we, they understand geographics. I didn't know anything at eight years old. And I would see cars pass, these, these cars and these semis. And I would be thinking, oh, I wonder where they're coming from. Oh, maybe Hawaii. Or I would just throw out names. I didn't know these, but you didn't know nothing about a St. Thomas or this or that. So at my, was it my 30th birthday or my 33rd birthday? I was in Aruba. And I was looking out the window in Aruba and the Holy Spirit brought that little girl sitting on that table saying that one day I'm going to travel the world and I'm going to see this and I'm going to see that. And the Lord brought that back to me. I spoke that. That was a dream. That was a little innocent girl's dream. You have to open your mouth. Nehemiah opened his mouth before he could get to a place of building Anything that was in ruins, he had to open his mouth and say, this is what I need. He had to ask for what he needed. So the king, King Jesus, our daddy God, you need to open your mouth. You are worthy to ask. I know you've been in a cycle of you feel like failure and maybe it was failure. Maybe you made a lot of mistakes in these 20 years from 20. 2000 to 2020. Maybe you did. So what? Ask God for forgiveness and then tell him what you need and what you want and repent, change your mind about it and start doing it a different way. Vision starts from within. Sight is the manifested work of your vision. You got to work your vision. God said, this is the year of manifestation of your vision. And he said to tell you, he's going to, to give you clear sight and unobstructed vision. He's going to give you clear sight. Hey, lady, Pat, hey, uh, lady, uh, Pearson. And he's going to give you unobstructed vision. He's going to be the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. Go get what the Lord has called you to get. Listen, sight 
I said this earlier, is what helps you to see something close up. The details, the the, the specifications. It, it's, it's the sight is the process that we use to see. Vision is the thing we use to dream and to manifest. Oh my God. Oh my God. He said we perish for lack of vision. You ain't dreaming. And if you are dreaming, that's all you're doing. You're just dreaming. Oh, I wish this. I wish that, that. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about literally meditating on a thing, on a desire, and on a dream until you see it manifest. Until you see it manifest. And that's where we are. So, um, the, the Bible reminds you, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man, including yours, the things that God has in store for you. You have to start seeing it differently, having a different vision. It is necessary uh, to have vision. Um, you, you, within vision, you, you have to plan. Hey, Anne, you have to plan. There has to be planning. There has to be casting of that vision so that it can manifest. Casting it is not only writing it, but speaking it and declaring it. Okay. So vision is for distance. Vision is for distance. It's the, it's the visionary. This is why visionaries, it's challenging a lot of times if you are, are if you work for support, um, a visionary because they're always in the distance. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They're always way ahead in their thoughts. There are things that I have seen uh, come to pass and I'm thinking, mm, God, I, I said that 10 years ago. You you gave me that three years ago. I'm a visionary. I, and that's visionaries can do a lot of things and sometimes they can do them well if they have the right support, right? And so it it's, it's, can be challenging following or running behind or supporting a visionary. But the, the beauty of a visionary is they don't get stale. Good God Almighty. Because God, God, they are a vessel that God can constantly pour down into. There are ideas that God has given me that I've given away to other people. Because I'm like, God gave me this, but this ain't for me to do. But I think I know somebody that can do this. I know that's a part of the, the prophetic mantle. But you must understand this is the year. Yes, get your short-term goals in place. Get your uh, long-term goals in place for this decade. But this year, it is about you getting things in order to manifest. Listen, some of you, a lot of the pressure that you're feeling is the end of that cycle. That cycle is coming to an end. And it is time for you to push. Your, your vision is crowning. Your baby, your vision your dream is crowning. It's time for it to birth and to manifest. Some of you have not, you haven't allowed yourself to become pregnant with your vision, pregnant with your purpose. Purpose and vision are two different things. You haven't allowed yourself to become pregnant with it, that it starts to speak to you. <laughs> if you've ever dreamed about the vision that God has given you, give me some smiley faces. Give me some thumbs ups. Give me some hearts. If you've ever dreamed to the point that you are in that dream and it seems real, that means it's time for it to be birthed. God's ready. You need to bear down and push, baby. Now, what does your, pu your push might look different from my push. Your push, God has told you to, to start that business, to write that book, to go buy that house, to go do that investment, whatever he's told you to do. Whatever, let's say God has told you to buy this four or five bedroom home. Let's just say he's told you to do that. Did you go get the welcome mat? God's promised you a child and you're like, but I ain't got pregnant yet. Did you go get the bib? Did you go get the rattle? Did you go get the, the, the first, you feel me? Get something, purchase something in the way of you believing that your vision has spoken back to you and told you it's time. It's time. It's time to manifest. So when you understand, you must allow your, your vision, visualizing your future. Uh, you know, do I? No, he don't want me to get into that. So it is time, beloved. It is time. I don't want to keep you long to pray and prepare for your vision to be made manifest in this year. It is necessary for you to put 
uh, into place what is needed for vision manifestation, short-term and long-term. Hey, Fon. Hey, Sora, Veranda. Short-term and long-term. Put into place what is needed to manifest the vision that you believe God has given you for your life, whether it's a ministry, a business, whatever it is. I, I, I think it's interesting, and I've said this to couples many times as God has allowed me uh, to counsel or coach whatever words you want to use. You should have a vision for your marriage. You should have a vision for your marriage. You should have a vision not only for your life, if you have a business or a ministry, you should have a vision for your marriage, right? If you're single, you should have a vision for your spouse and then your marriage. Vision represents this is who I am. When people see me, this is what they see. If it's a business, ATK Publishing, when they see me, this is what ATK Publishing represents. This is what ATK Speakers Firm represents. This is what Vision Focus Group represents. Vision for Tuesday, when you see me, this is what I represent when you see me and when I don't, when you don't. Vision is the big picture. What do you want people to think of you when you Enter a room and when you leave a room, that's the vision that you've casted over your life. And I pray that it's real. Amen. Get ready for vision manifestation. God is ready to manifest for you what he has for you. It requires that you get focused. Ask God uh, to focus you, to give you clarity of vision. To sharpen your accuracy so that you can prepare, so that you can execute. I'm going to say that again. Ask God, as you pray, to give you clarity of vision so you know exactly what you need to be doing for this season of your life. For this first year that will prepare you for the next nine years. That's what's key. What I, I just told a friend of mine, I have a plan of, of something that needs to happen this summer. And I said, but this I know, if it doesn't happen this summer before December 31st of 2020, that thing will be in the name of Jesus. Put a timeline to it. Ask God for sharp, clear, clarity, and accuracy so that you can prepare to execute and for the manifestation. Again, 20 represents the cycle ending and the reward coming. The cycle has ended, whatever that cycle has been, and now your reward is on the way. It is, you got to make it plain. You got to write it. You got to make it plain. I said that earlier. It's not just for you because vision is in you. Vision is in you. So this is why there are things you just can't seem to get, a, you can't get away from. Say it again. Say what again, Sans? Do you want me to really say something again? Or are you just saying that? So, right, it's the end of the cycle. And you're going to be rewarded. I, I don't. Again, it could be lack. If you were faithful to keep bringing your tithes into the storehouse, you were faithful. I, I know you were late on your bill sometime. You might even file bankruptcy. So what? The end of the cycle. God. A lot of things happened in these from tw 2000 to 2020. Glory to God. A lot of things happened. But <laughs> ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I commit that. That was then. This is now. Old things have passed away. Behold, I got a new way of thinking. When, when I was first diagnosed with Graves disease, well, not when I was first diagnosed. Well, anyway, it changed the shape of my eyes. It changed the shape of my eyes. And when it did that, my eyes protruded. And because my eyes protruded, when I would look in my peripheral, I would see like eight eight things over there. It was like quadruple sight, right? That ain't good. And so in that, uh, my, my vision on the side, they said vision, but really what it was, was my sight was obstructed. I didn't have double vision, honey. I had quadruple vision. So what they would make me do was focus on one thing and train, and then my eye would, I think it was the left one. It the muscle had become weak because of the condition of Graves' disease that had pushed my, my eyes out. And so the muscles were weak. 
So they would make me focus on a thing to retrain, good God Almighty, Hashabaseh Korama, retrain my sight. Some of you need to retrain your sight. By retraining my sight, my brain had to make my eyes stay focused on a thing. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I had to focus on a thing. So I had to force my eye. Like it would literally like just go off to the side. The muscle, it was weak. So I had to close my eyes and I could feel my eye coming back to center. And when I would open in with my eyes closed, I had to visualize my finger in the front of my face, just like this, but with my eyes closed. I had to get it in my eyesight and then I had to close my eyes and make and train that muscle to come back to center and focus on that thing. That's what's wrong with some of y'all now. Y'all got double and quadruple vision. You all over the place. Your sight is everywhere. And God needs for you to get centered. He needs you to get centered in the vision that he's given you for your life. He needs you to get focused. Hallelujah. So you can run this race that he has set before you. Hey, Brother Allen. Hey, Brother Patrick. He needs you to do that. And so because of that, in my glasses, these are, these are readers, in my glasses, they had to put a prism so that that would keep my eyes coming back to center, keep my sight coming back to center. Because with, with a crooked sight, your vision is going to be crooked. You ain't going to be able to see afar, let alone see up close. Good God Almighty. He, you can't have, you can't be double-minded in this season. You can't have double vision in this season. You got to get focused on what God has called you to do because this is the year of manifestation. God is ending the cycle. The cycle is ending so that you can receive your reward. So as you're getting cycle, get, getting focused on the vision. Remember, vision is about something being able to see afar off, being able to cast a vision. It's long term. Sight is what's close to you. Short term vision is sight. Uh, long term vision is long, long term sight is vision. So you got to have both to be successful. But encompassed in vision is sight. I hope you got that. You got to trust God in this time. You got to trust his timing. You got to trust his way. You got to trust his plan. You can't limit him. Try not to get ahead of him and certainly don't lag behind. Whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it without me. Order my steps. He will be the lamp unto your feet. He will be the light unto your pathway. He is the author and finisher, not only of your faith, but your fate. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for you. So it's time for you to birth your vision. I said this earlier. Some of you, um, your, your vision, your baby is crowning. You got to push. Some of you, uh, there are obstacles in the way. You, you haven't even allowed yourself to start moving towards vision manifestation. To even allow yourself, you, you, you got Braxton Hicks, is that what they're called? That it's not time for the baby to be birthed, but you need to get prepared. You, you need to get the room ready. Good God Almighty. You know the babies do. You know it's coming. Why ain't the nursery ready? Why ain't you got a business name? Why haven't you registered it? Why haven't you got a tax ID? Why? Well, hello? Come on, you got to get the things in order so that you can manifest what God has called you to do. I need you to hear this and then I'm going to be ending and I'm going to pray and then I'm going to end. God said, obstacles are simply obstructions to your way out. If there's an obstacle in your way, just you, you're going to have to move it. Sorry, you're going to have to move it. But it is it is an obstruction, a temporary obstruction to your way out. A lot of times obstacles are within an obstacle is your answer to your next. The obstacle often in your way is the answer to your next, but you're focusing on the obstacle instead of focusing on, okay, what is, why is this here? Why, why do I keep getting distracted by this thing? Why, why do I keep um, having these blockers? Because there is greatness that God wants to birth out of you. There is greatness in you that he wants to get out of you. And it is time for you to manifest. But you keep getting 
getting obstructions in your way. You keep getting obstacles in your way. You got obstacle courses. You got to go around this, go around that. But I guarantee you, if you keep moving and if you keep going, you're going to get to the end of the matter. You're going to get to your answer. Sometimes you have to get uncomfortable. So, sometimes you have to, God has to disturb your comfort and make you uncomfortable to get you to move. Now, I could talk about that all day long because I got definitely some examples of that in my life. And, and, and sometimes you're going to have to be uncomfortable. Be, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Until because that thing that is making you uncomfortable is an obstacle that you're going to have to get around. And as you do it, you're going to be stronger on the other side of it. You're going to have more wisdom on the other side of it. You're going to have some lessons. Hey, sissy, you're going to have some lessons on the other side of it that you can apply to your life and help other people in their lives. God, you know, uh, I, I've said this many times to couples that when they in counsel, they come through a thing and they, their marriage have, they come out on the other side and they're stronger and they're greater, but that God even allowed that for them to be a blessing to someone else. You, the challenges you're having with, with your child or something else is so that you can be a blessing to someone else when they happen to come to you about their child. Now you know how to pray. Now you know how to encourage them. So often we think that obstacles are there to, to stop us. No, they're to get our muscles stronger so we can know how to get around them. And Peter, when you've returned, go and restore your brethren. Go help somebody else after you come through this. Glory to God, because you're going to come through. Hallelujah. You're going to come through. So I encourage you today to write your vision, make it plain so that you can run with it. Again, understand vision is about long term. 20 slash 20 is about sight. And it's not even about perfect sight. But 2020 this year is about you manifesting vision. I know you're saying, I'm going to get to, I don't even know how this big old vision that I have will be manifested at the, by December 31st. It don't have to be the whole thing. It can be a part of it. What's a part of your vision? That's why you have to break it down. That's why you got to write it. So you can break it down. And this part, I'm going to have this part manifested by 20, by 1231. And, and as you're working that, then you start working on something else. Everybody is not multi, uh, multi gifted or, or multi talent. Everybody ain't ambidextrous. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But if you are a person that can multitask, you are ambidextrous. Am I saying that word right? You are that. Amen. You can do multiple things at a time and you can do them well. Awesome. Awesome. I know students who can write with their right and left hand, but one hand is stronger than the other. And that's the writing. I'm like, boo-boo, write with that hand because I can't read this hand over here. But they can use both of them. So whatever giftings and talents and abilities that you have, allow God to use them all in this season. Don't hold back. Like Nehemiah, when the king, when God asks you, what do you need? When God sends you someone to be a help to you and ask you, what do you need? Even if you have to say, you know what? Let me think about that. Because when you answer, you want to answer rightly so that you can get exactly what it is that you need. God is ready to manifest. God is ready to manifest the blessings of the Lord in your life. Again. 2020 is about the manifestation of whatever it is that you are waiting on God to do. 20 again represents the cycle ending, whatever the cycle was. I know we do. I totally agree with that, sissy. The cycle ending and you receiving and reaping your reward for whatever trials you faced in 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All of those things in the cycle of those years, 20 represents the coming, the end of that. And there is a reaping because you did not faint. Glory to God. You did not faint. And so 
Write it, make it plain so you can run with it. Allow yourself to dream again. Allow yourself to visualize your future. Visualize your life. That's what God wants. Yes, yes. Write it so that you can see the 10, 20, 50, 100 feet away. Amen. You can see the goals. Write them. Write them so that you can run with them. Consider the risk. Consider the opportunities, the weakness, the strengths of whatever it is that's a part of your vision. The SWAT, we know that. Write it out so that you won't be blindsided. You can't always think of everything, right? Can't always think of everything, but at least you'll be prepared. And prayerfully, you'll have a plan. Writing and having a vision helps you to train for longevity. It helps you to improve your skills and your knowledge. It, it, it requires you to train for longevity, working on a vision. It's not just short term. There are pieces to your vision that will be short term. But ultimately, writing out your vision helps you to train and prepare for longevity. Whether it is uh, improving a skill right? Or improving your knowledge. It's like training like an athlete. It's like training like an athlete, being uh, disciplined and consistent so that you can get the victory at the end so that you can, uh, the vision will, the win will be made manifest. But ultimately you have to believe in your vision. You got to believe in you. God believes in you. That's why you're still here. Glory to God. Isn't that right, sissy? That's why you're still here because God believes in you, Anita. God believes in you. And that's why you're still here. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. It is time to petition, to pray, to process it all, to plan for the vision to be made manifest in 2020. Amen. I pray that something encouraged you. I want you to say this with me. And I envision myself happy. I envision myself free. I envision myself satisfied. I envision myself fulfilled. I envision myself uh, successful. I envision myself living my life on purpose. Live life on purpose. Live your vision so that you can manifest your vision. Live your vision so that you can manifest your vision. One more time. I, en I envision myself happy. I envision myself free. Woo, free. Hallelujah. I envision myself fulfilled and satisfied. I envision myself successful. I envision myself living life on purpose. God, I thank you for those who tuned in and listened. I pray that as this video goes viral and it's shared and it's tagged and other people are brought in, Father, I pray, Lord, that something was said to help someone to understand vision in a different way and at a different level. God, I thank you for who you are in our lives, God. I thank you for perfecting the things that concern us. I thank you for the cycles coming to an end, God, that now they will re reap their reward in the name of of Jesus, God. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my purpose. I trust you with the plan that you have, God. Order our steps and let our steps be in line with your will and your way as we move towards purpose and destiny. We love you, Daddy. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, Yolanda, send me your phone number. God bless.